Hello, good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are things in Leo land? Um, okay. I've never happy. said that before. I won't say that again. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but um, I think it's all under my my <laughs> rule. So Leah Land works for me. I do not right. have a problem with that. <laughs> you know, I can see why not why you don't. So yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. So things are good. I've been uh hectic. Things have been hectic. Yeah. Um I don't know why. It's just I think things are picking up and we're starting to do things that maybe we yeah. haven't been out doing before. And it's like yeah. something like I've got stuff on my calendar and like even just two things right. now feels like, oh yeah. my gosh, what I mean, how do I do this? Yeah, your time is now split up more yes. than it used to be, especially yes. when it was open to the public at all. There wasn't like, I mean, you still had to cover phones and stuff, but it just wasn't physically, you weren't split and moving around all day the way you right. are now. Probably. Yes, yes. And like we had a library program last night that went very well, Tara who you work with out at Northwest yeah. did a birding program for us and we did it outside and we could hear the birds, occasionally oh, hear an airplane, but. Yes. <laughs> well, Northwest is near that airfield. So yeah. um, we actually do get, Tara also really likes that. She likes yeah. things I think that are in the air because she likes birds so much and she likes planes a lot. And um, so, you know, you'll hear, we can hear it really loud. And you know, when I'm outside, sometimes it'll be like a biplane, it'll be like an old fashioned, like, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of fun. You sometimes see people training. Yeah, and you also, you're on the path for some people to get to Rickenbacker. So, like, yeah. there's some military aircraft. So, yeah, so the military aircraft. And then Tara it's says, very interesting out there. It is. And then Tara says that from I, from the real, like, the real airport, whether it's Rick, Rick, I don't remember, but like, we are on someone's flight path southwest. Okay. We're also on like someone's flight path when they're leaving like real like big airplanes are leaving yeah. the airport. Yeah. It, it makes sense that it would be southwest um but we're on someone's there and so you know she'll look up and she'll tell me about what the <laughs> she's just so good at telling me what's going on in the sky <laughs> right yes and like it's it's so fun with her like there are some birds like you'll be out there you'll be talking to her and she'll be like that Oriole, or, you know, she'll, she won't even look behind her and she, yes. she'll know what bird is causing a ruckus at the bird. Right. So, yeah, she doesn't even confirm. Yeah, she she just knows. Um, did you get to see our ground squirrels while you were out there? I didn't see a squirrel, but I saw a, a rabbit. Oh, so that's good. We don't usually see rabbits during the day. I think, like, I think they're more like evening. Mm -hmm. It was, it was like, around 7 30 when i saw it because we had finished okay. and we were standing there talking and i yeah. saw it pop from one bush to the next and i was like oh it was so good, good. it was yeah good yeah because yeah. i know there's rabbits because i know something i know something there eats plants like isn't just digging stuff up but i know there's something that like nibbles plants but we don't usually see the rabbit i just wondered if you saw our 13 line ground squirrels because they are super fun and i'm, I'm sure tara has shown you pictures and we've told you about them before yeah, but I, so, they're like chipmunks, but they're longer and they have long tails. And uh, we had painters out there recently and one of the painters saw it, he's like, was that like a giant rat? Because the tail was really long. I just, if you've never seen yeah. one, it is a little bit like, you're what seeing was a that? magical creature, like this creature with this body and this tail and this head or whatever. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're different. I, I have seen them out there before, yeah. but that was, I didn't see any of those last night. Well, they've been, they must go inside in, in the evening time. And so you didn't see one because of that, because they are so active. <laughs> they, they have holes, they've built holes and tunnels in the grassy space, like between the the library parking lot and the road, but mm -hmm. then they come into the garden, they eat sunflower seeds, they eat from the from underneath the bird feeder, and then they <laughs> tear up them peanuts and sunflower seeds, and they put them out like right near the windows so that you can see them really well. So that when they have to come get food, you can watch them. There's babies, they put out a little dish of water for them so they can drink water. And you just like, they vacuum up all these seeds in their cheeks. And um, because, because of where their holes are, and because I think the colony may have gotten larger, um, I see them running past my office window. Like they are <laughs> distracting. I'll be on my computer and I'll just like I'll just see this little flash. And they're so busy. They run back and yeah. forth, and back and forth, and they're just like on a mission. And I just want to know what are they doing? Like I just I don't know. I want to talk to them. <laughs> busy life for the ground squirrel. It is. I did. I did 
steal a cherry from your cherry tree. Oh, good. Yes. Very tart, but very good. Yes, um, they are tart. Thinking, are those oh, cherries? And it was really funny because the dress I was wearing had cherries on it. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I have to have one. Yes. So I helped myself to a cherry. Right. We right. always do eat those cherries. And I don't want to make a sound, I don't know, that I should share this publicly. But we we weren't sure. We, we thought we could eat them, but we were never 100% sure if we should eat them. But we ate them anyway. <laughs> but we kind of, I think, I don't know it's if somebody waste just, if not. What? They go to waste if you didn't. Well, I know. Well, it was more like we didn't know if they were going to hurt us. And I yeah. don't know if we checked with somebody first or we were just like, we wouldn't, I, they wouldn't have planted something poisonous in our garden. <laughs> I don't really remember who was the first one to try one, but uh, we were all fine. And so yeah. now every year we eat them, but they are tart. Um, yeah. And but but I think they're very good and and uh, eat it eat at your own risk because <laughs> I don't think any of us know the scientific name of that tree to like right. verify what this some type of tart cherry that's yeah. What <laughs> yeah. And Mary says that she's enjoying the image of you talking to the squirrels. I really want to talk to them. I really just want yes. to hear what their life is like and figure out what they're always so busy doing. They the life of a ground squirrel. A a 13 lined ground squirrel. Yeah. Or... Yes. Yeah. It's got 13 line that lines down his back and they're very <laughs> cute. And I recommend everybody if you have a chance to come out to Northwest, if you come out in the summertime, especially like now yeah. June-ish, um, and if you come out mid morning to mid afternoon, they're just very busy. They're not out when it's raining. Um, but in weather like this, when it's been nice, they're just, they're very fun. And we have to be careful too, that they don't get in the building because one got in the building once and it was in the garage <laughs> and it was very hard to get it out. And it was, it does, has a chirping sound, which you wouldn't think, but it chirps. And we thought it was like a smoke detector. Smoke detector. <laughs> that's like, that's what it sounded like in the beginning. And then it got irregular and we had to track it down. So, um, they're curious little things as well. And we were trying to shepherd the <laughs> ground <laughs> out of the garage. I I would love to spend like a lot of time out there. Just I, I love sitting in that that garden. Like there have been a couple times when like when I've had a bad day or like you know yeah. I have gone and I have sat in that garden. Oh, I, that's great! I enjoy it so much. It just it especially like when the library is closed, which mm -hmm. I'm a weirdo. I know I go there when the library is closed, but. Right. It's very peaceful and just yeah. watching the birds and you know the other wildlife out there. It just, it just is really, yeah. really nice. And um, I was about to say something and it just totally popped out of my head. Well, it's especially nice out there since Tara has created that bird habitat. Since we do yes. have all those birds and the birds. And the and birds are very helpful. They planted all of those sunflowers. <laughs> so many sunflowers. And thankfully, I'm not sure who's responsible. It's probably a mixture of Terra Building Services. I'm not entirely sure, but they've pulled some of them and left some of them. So it's kind of an mm -hmm. artful wild sunflower yeah. situation because I'm pretty sure that the entire place would be sunflowers if they were not um, controlled in some way. Because yes, the birds plant all those sunflower seeds for us. And they're not, it's not like they're dom domesticated or anything, but they, they don't scare as easily as they used to, because they're, they're more familiar with here, and it's not like you can yeah. get up close. But, they, but they're like, okay, people are here. It's, yeah, it's like they're not going to. If they're in the gazebo, yeah. they will come to the feeder. You yes. know, you can yes, watch absolutely. them. Yeah, so you get a you get a good view of the birds when they're at the feeder, and you can see yeah. the little squabbles they have, and yes. the chasing each other. It's, it's yes. really fun watching them. It is, and so especially out. when Tara's there to tell you what kind they are. <laughs> I know. Yeah, if you can, if you're there when we're open and Tara's there, she will happily tell you everything, you know, about each, you know, what each type of bird at the feeder is and what to yeah. watch for. But even if not, like you said, you know, the library may be closed, but you're welcome to come and sit in the gazebo, anybody at any time. So yeah. come out there sometime. Oh, Andrea's here. She's party Hi, again. Andrea. We don't count tardies. You're, no. you're, you're present today. <laughs> right, right. We don't count tardies. Uh, here, we're very... <laughs> Well, I, honestly, Leah and I, we can't hold other people uh, to standards. We can't ourselves in here too. Right, yes, yes. Um, I, I I do not like mornings. Good morning, um, as <laughs> we all know. So yeah, yes. we don't hold it against people when they're late. Right. What have you been um, eating lately, Allison? Anything good? 
Um, yes, I know I talked last week. I had started listening to, um, oh shoot, I should have brought my book over here of what I read recently because I do know, I, well, anyway, okay, so I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll think about it later. Uh, I know I told you guys I was starting to listen to House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune and it, that the audio version was really good and I did finish that and it is a really sweet and uplifting story. Um, and I do recommend it to, it's it's one of those books that's like, it's pretty uh, like appropriate and written for almost all ages. I mean, I feel like it's definitely teen and adult. Um, yeah. There's some stuff that might be over the heads of children. And it is about like a middle-aged man and children typically, you know, aren't gonna really wanna read about a middle-aged man, but um, there's also a bunch of children in it. So, yeah. you know, it's one, I feel like it's a, it's a great family type of book in many ways, but of course, you know, if you're a parent, is that, you're to... is that going to be like a series? Are there going to be more of, of that um, story? Or? I don't know. I feel like there definitely could be or one set in that same world, but his next book is not. Okay. Um, not because I thought we had another book coming out and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's a at least as far as I know, it's not it's not any of the same characters. It may be like the same universe. Okay. Quite possibly the same world, but um it's not like a continuation with okay. the characters or anything, but I imagine it's a similarly felt, you know, a similarly heartfelt yeah. story. And so if you're looking, it's on Hoopla, so it's always available. And um, I don't know, it just, it's not that long and it just it really flows. And like I said last week, he does all of these voices that there's no indication why this person is deeply Southern accented. This person is a New York accent, This, per but he's got to do just all the- Distinguish voices. them, I guess. Yeah, you got to distinguish them somehow. And it does make for fun listening. And it's yeah. kind of like there's no reason why they couldn't be because this story, it doesn't really take place in a place that there's a city and then there's the sea and that's about it. And so yeah. it, there's no reason why it couldn't be. But um, you so that, yeah, if, you, if you're if you interested in, it is fa fantastical, you know, because there's mm -hmm. these, uh, you know, people with powers or non-human forms and stuff, but it's just, it just drops you in and doesn't, you don't have to like build in like a whole world, you know, a whole world you got to figure out. They're just kind of like, this is how it is. This person is a garden gnome. This person is Lucifer. This person. Uh, I want to be a garden gnome. What? I want to be a garden gnome. Well, and I mean, she's, she, it's a girl. She's like 200 something years old, which is, um, but she's still like a child she, mm -hmm. <laughs> at, that, at that age and she's got this full beard and she's really good at working in the garden. She has this beautiful <laughs> garden and plants all these things. And it's just a nice story about, you know, found family yes. and yeah. acceptance and it's creative. So I really enjoyed that and I enjoyed it on audio and it's available on Hoopla all the time. So if you're into it. Awesome. What about you? What are you listening or reading? Um, I've, I've gone through several books uh, mm -hmm. recently. Um, I think I may have mentioned um, Someone We Know by uh, Sherry LaPena the last time we talked. Okay. It was, it's kind of like a, a, a mystery thriller kind of thing where someone in the neighborhood has been murdered and it's like a, I, you get the story from like multiple different perspectives of all the different characters. Um, they're, they all like all live in this neighborhood and um, none of them can tell the truth. They're all a bunch of liars. Um, <laughs> the whole group of unreliable narrators. <laughs> yes, a whole group of unreliable narrators and like finally getting to like the who did it. it like for a while there, I was like, huh, I wonder who, and I figured it out, but it took me a while yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. Um, so we finally got there. Um, yeah. And I stumbled upon this author because of putting together book bundles. Like, okay. Um, I I had pulled one of this author's books for one of the book bundles, and I was like, "That sound that sound kind of good. Like maybe something I would enjoy." So yeah. I went online and found one that was available and downloaded it, and it was it was very good. I very much enjoyed it. I bet um, you learn a lot doing those book bundles. Because oh my god. You're my trying to be, your own pile is getting much, much bigger. I bet. Because yes. I'm sure, you know, you're bringing your own reading experience and expertise and seeing what's in the library and stuff. But you also have to do research. You also, yeah. you know, yeah. you don't know it all as much as we all want to. Uh, right. yeah. Don't know it all. Find it. 
we haven't read it all, but we know where to find it. So um, you probably learn a lot. Yeah. And by word, I mean, add to your pile. <laughs> yes. Like um, I, I, there was this one book bundle that I pulled. I'm like, she reads the kind of stuff I like to read. Let's find some new right. stuff. So, so it's like finding these, these, these thrillers. It's, it's been kind of fun. Um, yeah. I also, I had talked about it before um, when I saw that it was coming out. Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. Yes. It's one of those how far is a mother willing to go to protect her children kind of thing and yeah. protect the life that she has because yeah. she's a deep dark secret. So um, so yeah, that was that was really that was really interesting. And there's a point there where you're like, but then it turns yeah. out have um, you read other things by Jocelyn Jackson? What? Have you read other things by her that by that yeah, author? Yeah, I, I really like her. She's just yeah. got some really good stuff. I think the first one I read was the name just popped out of my head, but the cover is beautiful. There's this like a, a woman wearing a gingham dress, but like you really only see like like the middle of her 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 body. It's like this yeah. green check gingham dress and there's like a green apple like at her waist um and it's like mothers and children so like the it it, it works but it's a beautiful cover like just the image oh, yeah. it's really pretty um and if i could think of the name i would tell you mary <sighs> mary Google cover, Jackson. cover <laughs> um but she uh, person is she the person who you said you're always surprised that there's not a longer wait list for her stuff? Um, I think I think so. Yeah. I yeah. I really like her stuff. And Samantha really likes her stuff. Like Samantha and I are both like, oh, she's got a new yeah. book coming out. So whenever we see that, we tell each other. Yes. So, yes. Um, so yeah, we really like her. And I really just and she she doesn't, she also narrates books. She oh, narrates cool. her own books as well as other people's books. Oh, so nice. that I think is really cool. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I listen to. Do you know of any other examples of an author who writes books and narrates other people's books? I know authors narrating their own, but I don't know that I've ever heard I don't, I, I, I didn't know about that either, but there is the book, something about stars and Toledo or stars. I, I don't remember what the title is, but, um, but that book, she narrated that book. And I was, cause I turned, you know, I, I listened to it and I was like, narrated by Jocelyn Jackson. I'm like, she writes her own stuff and narrates her right. own stuff. So that that's was really, weird. really interesting. Yeah. That's cool. So, <laughs> what am I Googling? <laughs> Jocelyn Jackson. Is it Jocelyn? It's spelled Josh, J-O-S-H-I-L-Y-N. So yeah. she pronounces it Jocelyn. Okay. Um, Jocelyn Jackson. And it's the book with the cover with the green dress and the apple. That's what the title. I don't remember the title of that book. And that's what we want to know. Yeah. We want to know the title of that book. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, her stuff is really good. Um, and I may have been talking about Lisa Jewell when I said that I was surprised there were longer way. I think that that is who you were talking about. I think you was her. Her. But, but yeah. again, Jocelyn Jackson, I'm surprised that we don't have longer lists on her books because I find them yeah. really, really good. Like, like that you get to like that, like how people think and feel and um, like what makes, what makes them tick and um, Oh, grown up kind of pretty. Yes, that's that's the title. <laughs> with the green dress and the apple. You're awesome. Yeah. The library can always find the answers you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but I read that. And then another book that I read, because I, I've been on a reading. Yeah. Um, I and again, this is one that I talked to you about earlier this year, books we were excited about. Yeah. Um, Finley Donovan is killing it oh, by yeah. L. Cosimano. Yes. I'm horrible with names. El Cosimano. Yes. It was really fun. And it's like, she stumbles into this murder for hire situation where she's like. As one does, you know. As one does. In the morning because, you know, uh, being a single mother is crazy. And it's like this whole miscommunication, but um, it turns into this whole, this whole situation that you're just like, 
you're like, how much worse can it get? And then it gets worse. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so she ends up like investigating as well as, I'm not going to tell you because it's, it's a fabulous, but yeah. um, I just can found out. Us, can you remind us of the title again? I'm sorry. Finley Donovan is killing it. Okay. And there's going to be another book. I don't know if this is going to be a long series, but there's definitely a book two coming out. And that one is Finley Donovan Knocks Them Dead, I think is okay. the, the next title. Or right, something along those lines. lines. <laughs> yeah. So, but there's now going to be a Finley Donovan series. So I'm nice. very, very excited about that. Cool. Oh, other books that they're going to be a series about. Remember um, A Bad Day for Sunshine, yes. Sunshine by Linda uh, Jones, which you picked for me when we did Book Bundles for each other. I Good love, love, love that book. And the next book in that series is coming out next month. It's going, it's a good day for Chardonnay. Aw. <laughs> um, a bad day for sunshine. Is that a bad day for sunshine? Right. A good day for Chardonnay is book number two. Um Dorinda Jones. Um, I wanted to get the author's right. name out there. So that's phenomenal. It takes place in that world where there's like a little bit of Magic. Just a touch of paranormal, a touch yes. of yes. magic. Yeah, it's not like anything where you're like, "What this is," but there's just that touch, you know. Right. Well, and I think I think you have to distinguish for people. At least I know for me, but I think for other people too, if that touch of paranormal or supernatural, it's a big difference when it's involved in the actual crime or mystery. If there's mm -hmm. a possibility that the solution to the mystery is supernatural, I think people have a totally different feeling about that. Like, I don't really want to read a mystery where, as it turns out, a, a ghost did it or something. I don't know. Right. I can't it's not, that, it. not at all. But when there's like just the supernatural element, it's just something in the background, just a little touch of something is different. Yeah, like, and the one really person in town knows that things are going to be really bad for the police. So she bakes some muffins when things are going to be, when they're going to have a really tough week. And yeah. um, they're always like, and the police officers are like, by the size of the amount of pastries that she bakes, they they have an idea right. of like how bad it's going to be. It's almost it's almost just like taking it one step past like extreme intuition. It's yes. not like yeah, that. it's not it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So well, I'm excited that that's coming out. I hope that you're too. able to uh, because that, that was really. really good, and I really enjoyed the mother daughter relationship in those. They were books. cute. Yes, they were really cute. I like yeah. that. But I have to tell you. Okay. The book that I had been waiting for like all year, um, One Last Stop by oh, Give us your review. Kristen, I got it and I got to read it and I read it like in three days. And it was, well, I listened Good. to it, it was, like 12 hours or something, but you know, yeah. so I, I loved it. It was phenomenal. And you know, there's, there's, there's that supernatural element to it because yeah. there's time travel, but there's, they, they kind of figure out like how it happened. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're able to explain why it happened eventually um, in the story. Like that comes very later. Um, yeah. But they don't leave you hanging in that regard. You know, yeah. like, we're never going to know. Yeah. Right. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful love story. Mm -hmm. And it's also like the one character She's growing up and is able to see her mother as a person with flaws. I think, you know, a lot of times we we expect our parents to be perfect and we, yeah. they're, we get very angry when they do things wrong. Yeah. But, you know, it, she grows and she's able to see, well, she was doing the best that she could. Mm -hmm. Maybe it wasn't perfect, but yeah. so like their relationship changes. So this is just, yeah, a very, very good story. And there's not just like one romance. There are a couple romances in the story, yeah. like her roommate and, and another person in the, the building. You know, there's yeah. a little bit of budding romance there, too. So it's just yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful story. And I don't know what it is about Casey McQuiston's writing, mm -hmm. but it just... <sighs> I don't know. I just, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love her books. Um, yeah. I mean, Paris had with her only been two so, <laughs> so far. And I'm, yeah. And I'm yeah. Really I should definitely, 
pick one or both of those up because I hear such good things about her. And now that I'm, I am uh, kind of fully immersing myself in the contemporary romance world, um, I might as well. And I know that hers, hers fall under the, I think they may fall under the umbrella of like a little, like you said, like a little bit more than just romance, mm -hmm. but still that, as I described it, pastel cover with cartoon people. Very very pastel coat color cover with the cartoons um and the game rolly bang that they have invented in in this rolly bang <laughs> rolly bang the floor okay. in their apartment is uneven so <laughs> so they use the desk chair and see how yeah. far you go and yeah rolly bang yeah oh my <laughs> gosh it sounds like they have a really good time that's super so, cute and I love that it. What yeah that's that? really cute when they're able to like really fill out just kind of the day-to-day uh, -day humanness of people's yeah. lives and coming up with a game like a game like that or whatever, I don't know, it's yeah, fun. It's, just, it's, it's a very fun group of people. Um, yeah. You know, all of her friends that, you know, she's got roommates and so all of them and their yeah. lives. I just, it's, yeah, I really enjoyed that book and the group of characters that she created there. It was, it was I'm so glad. really nice. I know I, you were looking forward to that one. Yeah, I remember you were very it. looking forward to that one. Yeah. Um, I've been reading, you know, I read um, like advanced copies of things. I get mm -hmm. on websites and request e-copies of things on my Kindle. And so I feel like maybe next week I'll share some of those things because a lot of the ones that I've read and liked um, had like July or August publication dates and so I feel like since they're coming up maybe that would be a good time to talk about okay. it because it's kind of crummy to talk about a book oh I read this I really like it. you won't believe the ending it comes out in six months so <laughs> just bookmark this video I mean you know it's, right. yeah at least and like, but, on it, <laughs> you know? with some of these books it's like I talked about this earlier in the year is one that I'm looking forward to yes. I finally got it yeah right yeah so I maybe because I have been reading I got a little I got a little uh out of my depth or a little over my head and having so many e-copies of things. And so I've kind of been powering. Good morning, Carrie. We discussed it earlier. There's no tardies. We do not, no uh, you just have to stay late. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, what was I saying? oh yeah. So I've been reading, a lot of my reading has been those advanced copies because I've requested them and I want to like do my due diligence and like, you know, give them the review on Goodreads and do what is, required in exchange for being given an, an advanced copy, but that's kind of all I've been reading lately. So <laughs> I will update you guys next week or sometime in the near future about the ones that are being published now or very soon. Um, I did do, this is a total, I'm sorry, my transition is not in place, um, but I did do some more research on audiobooks. I know we're almost out of time here, which is totally fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, audiobooks. But, but I was looking, cause it continues to be audiobook month and I was doing some more research on that and um, I'm gonna say um oh just we were talking about you know we talked a lot about audible and you know the audible exclusive stuff and you know audible not being great for libraries etc cetera, etc cetera. but i was reading a history of audio books article just a brief thing oh. that that mentioned audible came about as a company in the 90s and um same audible and they sold a a device, it was $199 and it was basically like a play away that we carry at the library now, sort of, it was like an MP3 yeah. player, but it wasn't an MP3 player yet. Um, but it was this device, you could only buy it from Audible. And um, then you would connect over www. It was like, they used that as like a way we don't use it. Um, right. You connect and get, you could download up to two hours of an audiobook at a time onto your Audible device, portable device, and that was in 1997. And um, people, I actually, I did, maybe I'll send it to Mary, we'll put it in the comments. There's this YouTube video um, series called Oddware, where they just talk about hardware and stuff that is just strange and outdated or things that used to be cool, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it was a YouTube pot thing, and I didn't get all through the whole video yet to see him use it, but, um, people talked about it saying like, they would compare it to like a Walkman and be like, this is so much worse than a Walkman because you only get two hours on here, it's harder. You have to like connect it to this computer and get on the World Wide Web to put stuff on it. But they weren't conceiving of like what was about to come and how this really was the future, but it wasn't, yeah. I mean, it certainly wasn't. Oh, <laughs> Things did two improve. Hours. 
years. I know. But <laughs> it's like, I listen to, I can listen to like a 48 hour book. And, and that like, was using, I know. 40 I know. Hours. And that was using their like special like file compression software, you know, to make yeah. it to, you know, even with that. Um, it's, it's amazing how technology has changed. Like when yeah. I was in grad school and I had a thumb drive, it was like, 512 kilobytes, yes. you know? And now it's like you get 16 megabytes for like, it, yeah. yeah. The, the way technology has changed and the way we're able to store it and transfer it is just- Yes. Oh, I know, I know. And so I just thought that was interesting and I am gonna finish watching that video because he does go through and- um, I would love to see that, yes. I'll post it, I'll post it in the comments. I had Since I hadn't watched the whole thing, I didn't actually want to send it to Mary to post, because I just, yeah. what if it turned bad? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I haven't watched all of it yet, but it, I doubt that it will. It was really interesting, and I kind of highlighted the bottom bar to see what came next, and um, he does, like, Mary use it. Found it. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and so it uh, you do get to see him use it and, try, like, load files onto it because you have to connect to like Windows 95. So I think whoever does this show has all this old equipment, you know. Yeah. That, so um, anyway, it just, we talked about Audible last week and we picture it being like the giant it is now, but it started with this $199 thing that people really weren't into. That you could load two hours of audio onto. Man. They got there eventually. <laughs> they did get there, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that is crazy. Yeah, so I wanted to share that today just before I it left my brain. I thought you guys might enjoy that. <laughs> um, I also, there was something about audiobooks that I wanted to share yeah. with everyone because um, you had found the face of romance books. Jason Romans Aaron Baca, I believe is his name, which. <laughs> yes. Yes. I found the voice of audiobooks. You did. Um, his name is Scott Brick. He has narrated okay. over 900 audiobooks. That's there more covers this, than Jason Aaron Baca has been on. Um, this this is an article um, from la from I always say last year. It was from 2019. When I say last year, I mean 2019. In my brain, 2020 just didn't exist. But yeah. The last he reads, year. <laughs> he reads 50 books a year. Like he narrates 50 books a year. He reads them so you don't have to. <laughs> but there you he, go. He's he does um he's read Ayn Rand, Eric Larson, Truman, Truman Capote, Mary's favorite, William Faulkner, um, Dennis Lehane, Pat Conroy, um Bradbury, Asimov. Um, Philip K. Dick, he, Brad Meltzer, Kai Klesler, like he will do like all yeah. of their books, like the whole series. Um, wow. He, um, he, because he is so prolific and such a good audiobook narrator, he gets like more than the industry average um, <laughs> for his, he was a trained actor. Okay. He did, um, Shakespeare, he, um, I think he he was even in a movie. I forget what movie. I don't, I don't remember. It wasn't one that I recognized. Um, uh, so, but he does avoid certain types of books. He will refuse to do um, any books that deal with child abuse or sexual abuse. He says it's really difficult for him to live in that sure. for a week, um, yeah. which I totally, I totally yeah. get. Although yeah. a lot of times that is what I end up listening to. I know, to. I know. But um, he also will not do biographies of politicians he finds distasteful. <laughs> um, so I thought that was really interesting. At the level he's at, you get to pick and choose your work, you yeah. know? Like you really yeah. can say that. You can, he can have a writer. When he goes in to record his audiobook, he can be like, I need only red M&Ms in this bowl. And they would have to do it because, I mean, he's Scott Britt. He's, he's like the voice. He um he also did Alexander Hamilton, the 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 um the nonfiction book that the oh yeah the, yeah um Helter Skelter, uh, the Hunt for Red October, uh, the Dune series. Um, okay. Yeah, so he has done like a lot of of books. So let me see if I can find his. To date, he has won over sixty earphone awards as well as five Audis, five Sovas, 
um, a Grammy nomination for his cast multicast recording of The Mask of Zorro. And after recording 250 titles in his first five years, Audiophile Magazine named Brick one of the fastest rising stars in the audiobook galaxy. He was proclaimed galaxy. galaxy. <laughs> he was proclaimed a golden voice, but it was the Wall Street Journal that sealed the moniker with a front page article in November 2004. And Publishers Weekly named Brick Narrator of the Year in 2007 and 2011. Wow. And he was followed up with another feature in the Wall Street Journal in 2019. So he's like the audio book. Yeah. He's done like. And, you know, I'll have to look into it. And it's not like I've listened to a gazillion audiobooks in my life, but I have listened to a handful. I'm not sure I've ever listened to anything he's narrated. You read all his authors, and I'm not sure I, I've ever listened to any of them. I know. Hit Parade. That was the film he was in, Hit Parade. Oh, okay. But, um, I know that I listened to him. I read um, that Dennis Lehane book. Uh, uh, let me see if the, uh, the title is listed. Sorry, I have nothing to add. I, I know I should be filling this yes. there, but I'm just watching so you. many books. Um, I'm into our conversation. I forget other people are watching and I need to fill it. It's right? Like, yeah, it's, it's like, you don't want to just listen to me, watch me turn pages. I, I truly sometimes forget other people are here. I am so sorry to those in the comments. Andrea says she loves The Hunt for Red October, but then she says, actually, I've not read the book, so I should say I love the movie. Maybe you could listen to the book and that could be, Andrea, you right. probably read a book uh, narrated by, or you probably listened to a book narrated by Scott Brick. I think all those authors. I, I, yeah. There was one that was like, oh, I listened to that one, but I can't find Mystic River. Mystic River. Okay. Mystic River. That was the book. I was nice. like, oh, I listened to that one. And how did the library know? They either like Mystic River. Yes, that was the book. That was the book. <laughs> you got there before I did. <sighs> but yes, he, um, yeah. well, that's that. so cool. he, he did that one. And I also found a, an article. Sorry, I'm like all yeah. talking about you today. I found an article um, from Mental Floss about audiobook narrating. Yeah. And, like, one of the key things you need to be an audiobook narrator, chapstick. Do not go into the recording booth without chapstick. Okay. You end up with chapped bloody lips by the end of the week and it is a nightmare. Um, because reading out loud for that long, it just, you get I'm picturing caught. someone like moving the audio booth and like you said, chapped bloody lips. I'm picturing like a really extreme version of that. And like blood is like, and they're like, they're looking like they've just, you know, escaped a fight or kidnapping or, you know, came down from a mountain after being lost on, you know, a, a journey or whatever. I'm picturing them like stumbling out and it's all because they read an audio book without chapstick. <laughs> but it actually, like this article, one of the one of the things, uh, the seven secrets is it's very physical. Like even though you're not moving around, mm -hmm. it's actually a lot of work to stay still so that you don't cause unnecessary noise. You have to be yeah. constantly aware of that. Um, yeah. Can't wear certain types of clothing. Uh, do not wear polyester into the recording booth. Okay. Um, <laughs> I do wear a lot of polyester day in day out. I'm wearing yes. my polyester pants. On. Um, they, you know, it was really interesting. Have you ever actually been in a re an audio re recording booth? No, but I know you've told us about how you did at Midwest. It was very, it's, 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 the room is like so silent. It's just like yeah. this lack of noise. Like yeah. suddenly you can hear. Like Does it have to be acoustically? Yes. Perfect. And like the floor yeah, even floats. Like the floor isn't like the flooring mm -hmm. isn't like sealed in. Oh no, we lost Leah. Well, we'll wait for her a second to see if she comes back. Because sometimes she does, but sometimes she doesn't. Oh, there she is. Camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are you there now? I'm going to start your video. Yep. I'm here. Okay, cool. <laughs> here yeah like the floor floats so that you don't get like floor creak sounds and like all of yeah. the it was so nerve-wracking being in that quiet yeah. it was it was it was very disconcerting to be in there yeah i bet and i do not read well when i um read out loud 
it's one of those, like I, I just did, I obviously I can, but I get very nervous when I think about doing it. Um, when I say floats, not like it's not up in the air. It's just like, the, like the, the, the floor moves with you. Like it kind of adjusts, like it, it, I can't explain it. It's like, it's not like clipped in place kind of it, like it's got some movement to it. So it doesn't, yeah, it's, it's weird, but, um, but yeah, being in that silence was like, Ooh. And so yeah. you become so much more aware of how you sound and what you're, mm -hmm. what you're saying. It's, it was kind of, for me, it was very, very intimidating because I don't yeah. like reading out loud. Yeah. But it was, it was really cool. Yeah. And I mean, I definitely, I have a lot of, uh, I feel like not everyone, not most people could be a good audiobook narrator. I mean, the good ones, I definitely, yeah. I don't know. It takes a lot to be good at that, that you wouldn't even think about because they also have to be familiar enough with the text to do it well. So it's like being an actor and I know that they have it. It's not like they have to have it memorized or anything like that, but they have to be familiar enough with what's what they're reading that they do it right. One of, one of the secrets from it, the mental floss article was sometimes, you know, a lot of times they do um, have a little time with, with it, but um, they sometimes because of the way things move very quickly in the publishing world, they will get it like the night before and have to like cram. And um, one, one thing that they, one person, one of the narrators, um, they were saying that they don't like to like get, they, they want the story to be authentic when they read it. So yeah. they don't want it to sound practice. So they don't like read, read it, but they'll scan for things like, like action verbs. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, when someone whispers or shouted, mm -hmm. you know, he shouted because you don't want to get, you don't want to read the sentence. Where are you going? He shouted, you know, right. you, you have to, you have to know that. Right. So they will scan and they will like highlight those words so that they can see that, Oh, that's coming. So they can read that sentence correctly, but they, yeah. they don't like, they don't read, read the book mm -hmm. because they want it to be, they want to experience it as they're reading it because that makes the reading more authentic, which sure. I thought was really interesting. That is interesting. That's not what I would have expected. Yeah. And I but, feel like if you got the audiobook the night before, I feel like, and I mean, I'm obviously being judgy here, but in my mind, I'm like, okay, so those are the crappy audiobooks I've listened to. Those are the ones that were poorly narrated. But right? Maybe, yeah. Maybe that's um, but but it's, it's hard to imagine the good ones I've listened to that someone has not become very familiar with that text. It feels like they have. But you know, like this guy, he does fifty books a year. He he narrates fifty books a year. How yeah. do you have time? To get to know fifty books, there are only oh, fifty two. You don't books. have to read it once. I mean, I read yeah. more than fifty books in a year easily. Yeah. So but, you don't have to read it one time. <laughs> but yeah, it just it was it was it was interesting. Yeah. Um, and if you and, read the whole series, if you read books written by the same yeah. person, you do, you wouldn't have to because you know what this investigator mm -hmm. is like. You know what this whatever. But I'm just thinking, especially like that book I just read, House on the Cerulean Sea. He had to, I know he had to have practiced those voices. You had to develop the character's voice and accent for these certain people and then make sure you could sink into each character's voice um, reliably, you know? Yes. And I just feel like that that's not an overnight process. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'm thinking of, like, the Outlander series. I know that Davina Porter, she's the narrator of that series. She spent time, like with a Gaelic coach to learn some of the Gaelic phrases that are used for yeah, that series. Yeah. Um, because like there, there, there's like, Jamie has a nickname for Claire um, that, that is used in every book. Mm -hmm. um, so like she had to learn and, you know, it's got to roll off the tongue because he's, right. he, he's in Gaelic is yeah. his first language. So, you know, yeah. um, but she also has to do like French accents because they go to yeah. France and they're in the Caribbean. So she's got to do um, like accents there. She's got to do um, English accents and Scottish accents for the different characters. You know, yeah. it's just for someone like that, who's doing all of that work yeah. for all of those different characters. Yeah. So she's got to spend a lot of time with those books and yeah. um, you know, 
she learned some words that the Native Americans speak. And it's, mm -hmm. um, so all of these different languages, because yeah. phrases in all of these languages show up in the book. So it's, yeah. you've got to spend a lot of time, certain people with certain, yeah. people, people, certain text, it's going to wow. take a lot of work. But I can see how you wouldn't, and I'm just going to have to think about that now on the audiobooks I listen to in the future. Like, did this, is this narrator learning at the same time as me what happens because that would just be crazy it makes me feel mm -hmm. so unsettled to think about going into a studio and recording an audiobook and not knowing what happens in it like right. i have control over that situation and so perhaps i mean they say that apparently you know for some of them it feels more natural to not know but i do not i do not prefer. i wouldn't like that like if i if i were going to read something i would want to read it beforehand I like oh. I, I know when i was in elementary school and you would like everyone would read a paragraph i'd like count the people ahead of me and like count so i knew which yes. paragraph i was going to read and practice yes. it before it was my turn which meant well, i didn't hear uh, what anyone else said but <laughs> along along right i know you were too distracted and disturbed by the fact you had to read out loud yes. um well mary has firsthand experience with me i mean you do as well but um she filmed me this week doing like our, our summer reading recommendation we have on our website or on our Facebook page. If you guys have or have not seen, we're posting um, like reading suggestions, different people at the library recommending a book. So she filmed me doing mine, which I had, I had planned what I was going to say. I had it written out. I practiced many times. I practiced in the bathroom right before she came in the bathroom mirror and um, she came to film me. And I was like, it was as if not only did I not know what I was going to say, but it's as if I hadn't even read the book. What is this book about? I'm like looking at the cover, like confused, like this is my book recommendation. And I think Mary was like, well, maybe we should film you in the bathroom doing it. <laughs> she was there, of course, um, because I did fine in there. Um, yeah. So there were many takes that needed to happen. So I can only extrapolate that out to, I don't know, a 15 hour audio book instead of a 45 second book promo. <laughs> And Andrea checked, and her version of Dune is narrated by Scott Brick. So, um, yes, and, she, and to clarify, Andrea here, she has tried to listen to that version of Dune, but it has like sound effects that are distracting to her and she doesn't enjoy it. So, we've actually been talking about that version of Dune very recently. And so, it is very funny to hear that it's narrated by this guy that we've been talking about. <laughs> um, sometimes the, the, there are parts of audiobooks that are awkward. I, some, lots of authors want to narrate their own book and yeah. lots of publishers have to be like, no, you're not yeah. good. You, you, yeah. you can't do it. There's one book that I read, um, Let's Pretend This Never Happened by Jenny Lawson. Lawson? Lawson. Lawson. Okay. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Is it the humor person who talks yes, about the yes, yes, Yeah. yeah. I do not like her as a narrator. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it, but I cannot with her. <laughs> I that one, I didn't mind her reading like yeah. what happened. I hated what she did for the chapter introductions. Mm -hmm. It was like where she like sang them. I'm like, what are yeah. you doing? I was just able to like block that out and skip it. And then like once she started reading, it was fine. Because yeah. it's it's more like someone telling you a story about what yeah. happened to them and their embarrassing incident. So it yeah. was it was okay with that. But she needed to not sing those chapter introductions. Yeah. She <laughs> it was bad. She was real hard into her quirkiness. And I think yes. that that's what I am not a fan of personally. But that's when I've listened to her stuff, I've been like, man, if maybe if I just read it, but she really kind of pushes all that and it's makes me feel very tired. I feel very exhausted when I listen to her do her audio books. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, just just don't. You know, yeah. the, the, the chapter content itself, she she did fine with, but yeah. it was like just the introductions was just like, no. Please don't. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, yeah, like you, I'm like exhausted. Like it just yes, no. I just felt tired. I didn't listen to that one. I listened to a different one. Um, okay, and that's not. I can't remember which one it was, but yeah, and but she has very. She has like a lot of fans and people who really enjoy yeah. and appreciate her. So she she knows what she's doing in some regard. But um, I think I may be a print Jenny Lawson reader. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, and it was, authors. Authors know their own work the best, so you would think that they would be best at it, but that is absolutely not always the case. Uh, yeah. Just because you wrote it doesn't mean you're good at reading it. Right, yeah. I, I, there have been a couple of books that I have 
forced myself to get through that were author read that I'm just like, man, you should have paid someone else to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there have been a couple of books I've had to give up on that were author read. I'm just like, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, I've re I, re I have not actually listened to this, but in some of the research I did, which again, it's fine. Everything we talked about was interesting, mm -hmm. but um, much of my research will again remain un unreported for today. Yeah. Um, but something I did read was that Toni Morrison reads like oh, I think all of her own books, and um, okay. people really recommend really recommend them. That she does a very good job reading reading her work. So. I think Maya Angelou has read some of her own. Yes, and she has, yeah. It, it, it's listed as some of like the best audio books. Yeah. Um, for Andrea, I wanted to say, I think there is another version of Dune by Simon Vance. I do not know if it is dramatized, but because mm -hmm. um, I was looking at other prolific audiobook authors, mm -hmm. narrators, not authors. Yeah. Simon Vance, he's up there. He's got like over 500 books that he has he has narrated and he's won lots of awards. And um, I, he also did Dune, both of them did Dune. Okay. Like, why was it done twice? But maybe because people didn't like the audio version. That well, Andrea said did. she loves Simon Vance, so that's exciting. And she also yes. wondered if he had mentioned um, Madeline Lingle reading her series because I think Madeline Lingle was not a great narrator, even though, you know, your heart loves Madeline Lingle and you love the series, but her as a narrator, Andrea can, uh, can expound if there's more to that, but I think that she was like not great. She was not great, yeah. Okay. I listened to one of hers and it was, it was just, her voice didn't match the characters. Like she's very much this, you know, grown woman and she's got, like the characters in the book were kids and it just mm -hmm. that didn't match and it was very hard for me I think that was yeah. part of the problem that I had yeah um, every time we talk about them but John Walters narrates his water. his waters sorry I like to change people's names um <laughs> creative it's Leland everyone yes. has their I will own rename name. you to whatever I want right um <laughs> Um, so yeah, so um, I'm trying to think who else is really good. Simon Vance is really good. I've listened to several of his, several books that he has narrated. Um, so uh, Andrea, we have that in common. Yes. Um, um, and when we're talking about, I mean, I guess we're just going to go to an hour today and that's just- Okay, it. whatever. Um, but when we talked about that quiz last week that you take that tells you what audiobook Mm -hmm. audiobook you should read next and we both got the result uh, a celebrity read audiobook um i just wanted to mention a few of those because I, I really do like celebrity read audiobooks <laughs> that was actually very accurate for me yeah. and um many of those are like celebrity memoirs and the celebrities reading their own thing mm -hmm. so i just wanted to quickly run through i'm not gonna expound on all of them but quickly run through some of the ones that really are my favorites uh stories i only tell my friends by rob lowe is really, really, really excellent. He actually had it before the pandemic, a tour um, of him not reading the audiobook, but telling those stories because people really, really enjoyed that audiobook. Um, okay. Just talked about his career, um, you know, being in the outsiders. Just it, it was just really, really, it was a really good book. He has a great voice. Um, he does, yeah. Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me by Mindy Kaling? I really enjoyed that one. Everybody should be on board with Bossy Pants by Tina Fey and Yes Please by Amy Poehler. Those are both really excellent audio books, especially Amy Poehler's because it has other people read and she plays clips from her shows. Um, I talked about this on the show. I want to be where the normal people are by Rachel Bloom um, because there's a singing portion in that that was not upsetting. <laughs> um, that was okay. I um, love the cover of that book. It is so no. like angsty like from my youth childhood like it's just it would have it would have been perfect on the shelves next to like sweet valley high like yes and it yeah. is a super short read to super short listen and just really bubbly and just easy to go with um one i have not read yet uh because i'm on hold for it the wreckage of my presence um by casey wilson that's another celebrity read book of essays um talking as fast as i can by lauren graham um, so these are celebrity memoirs. You can tell that I, I love, I've read those. I love all of those books. Um, and then, but then there's also audio books written by somebody else narrated by a celebrity. For example, um, the Dutch house by Ann Patchett, which is read by Tom Hanks. Um, I'm really 
interested in getting a hold of, I'm on hold for it, Heartburn uh, by Nora Ephron, which is read by Meryl Streep, who was in the movie Heartburn. Oh, um, that's cool. And she narrates the audio version. And then speaking of Meryl Streep, she also leads a full cast reading of Charlotte's Web, which I feel like has got to be great. Um, and then one more, um, You Don't Look Your Age by Sheila Nevins came out a couple years ago, and it's just a book of essays, um, a lot of it being about being an older or aging woman, I believe, kind of Nora Ephron-esque. Um, but the people who read those essays, it's an incredibly long list, but it includes Meryl Streep, Katie Couric, RuPaul, Martha Stewart, Glenn, Glenn Close, Lily Tomlin, just this whole. So we think a lot about celebrity memoirs being read by the celebrity themselves, but they also will sometimes read other authors' works, and those tend to be very good because it's a very, I mean, Meryl Streep. <laughs> Meryl Streep reading your book is pretty great. <laughs> and I feel um, like Charlotte's Web with Meryl Streep would be excellent. <laughs> I wanted to mention a book. You you and I heard the author talk about this. Hey, kiddo. Yeah. Um, it's like a maybe an older kid teen book. It, mm -hmm. it kind of falls in there in that range. Uh, Jarrett Borsazka. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I very much apologize to you, Jared. Uh, K-R-O-S-O-C-Z-K-A. Like, what is with that spelling? You couldn't have come up with a, 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 a nom de plume that was pronounceable. I'm sorry. Anyway, this is a full cast narrated book, but it's about, like, it's, it's a story of him growing up mm -hmm. and, like, um, you know, some of the struggles that he went through, you know, he talks about like all these different people in his life, like the lunch lady. So he went back and he got the woman who was the lunch lady at his school to narrate her portion of the, of the audio book. And he went back and he got, he took over the real people from his life. Mm -hmm. If they were still around and still able to narrate their portion of the book and like some of the teachers that he had, mm -hmm. like these aren't famous people, but it's a full cast mm -hmm. of like, the real people from his life yeah. and the impact they had on him. And it just, I just love the idea of, of, of that and getting the people who were yeah. there really part of it to be yeah. in the audio book. Like that just. Did that, just did that win that Odyssey award? Yeah. He won, he won the audio book awards for that one. It's, it's got an audio award and the Odyssey Award. Yeah, so. I was remembering the Odyssey Award because um, <laughs> someone who we used to work with was on that committee that selected that. So I remember her posting about it, Robin. Um, <laughs> and so, and it's, I feel like it's especially effective that he pulled those people in for that audio book. I mean, it's incredible and it's really cool and sweet. Um, but the the book itself is a graphic novel and he does something sort of similar in that, in that all the stuff, the documents or artwork or anything he has still has he scanned that in and like used that in the graphic image. So like if he's at his desk, like drawing, he doesn't draw himself drawing, he draws himself. And then the little image that's in there is the real thing that he drew. And the, between the kind of like chapter pages is like the real, I want to say it's like the wallpaper in his grandma's house. Like he has a real sample of that, that he scanned in. And so he, he even tried to do that. I feel like in the print version, you know, yeah, I don't know. And he was such a good speaker. I feel like we've mentioned him on here before. His speech was that we the presentation he gave to us at the conference we went to was so good. I was in tears. Yeah, it was, I it was long and hard to find a copy of that exact talk. And I never did. He had a TED talk and it was also good, but it was not the same thing that we got because what we got was geared toward librarians. So yeah. um, it got us in our librarian feels and it was really good. <laughs> It, it was, it was, it was phenomenal and he was great. And I just, I love the the idea of that audio book and bringing in the real people yeah. to, to narrate, so. Well, we've done it for an hour today. Thank you, Andrea and Mary and Carrie for sticking with us today. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, so we'll be back next week. Um, yes. I don't know what else to say beyond that. We have no idea what we'll be talking about, but we will we will be here and hopefully you will be too. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye everyone.